Let's build some native Windows application with great performance using Flutter and Dart. We're gonna, I'm going to build a camera application for this nice Ricoh Theta Z1 360 degree camera. You can also do this for Mac. Let's dig into how you can quickly build a, a high performing Windows desktop application using Flutter. My Windows desktop connected to this Ricoh Theta camera using Wi-Fi. When you ship your application, there's many different ways. I'm just shipping it as a simple zipped file for ease of use for me. When the user extracts the zipped file, one of the files will be this uh, type of application that you can double click. When you double click it, the, the application that we're building comes up immediately. So again, this application is now connected to the Ricoh Theta Z1 camera using Wi-Fi. Start the application, it identifies the model of the Theta camera, Z1. Commands are slightly different depending on which camera model you have. So the first step is we send out a command to the camera to tell it, to ask it what type of model are you. Uh, you can do, grab some info, check the state of the camera. You can take a picture with the camera here. We can also view the image. It's coming straight from the camera, so it might take a, a bit of a delay here. And you can see that the performance of the uh, the scrolling of the 360 degree image, which is quite large, is excellent. Let's make it full screen here. Well, that's a big face. Take a picture. I just took this picture. My face isn't too great here. But let's check it out. So again, the delay you're seeing is not a result of the desktop application, but more a result of the transfer speed between the camera and the desktop computer I'm having. I've only have it connected with 2.4 gigahertz, not 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It's just to show you that we can get some pretty great performance with the graphics using a native uh, Windows desktop application. One thing you need to do is to make sure that your, your Flutter channel is on dev. So you set it with Flutter channel dev. It takes the development branch of the Flutter repository. So when you're in Flutter Doctor, make sure you have Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code installed. I have both. Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio installed. When you install Visual Studio, you need you do need to install the C++ executables along with Visual Studio. You need to install Visual Studio. I'm using the Visual Studio Community Edition 2019. When you install Visual Studio, you need to install the desktop development with C++. This module right here this is the only one you need. You don't actually need to use Visual Studio for development but you do need to have it installed in order to do the build of the Windows desktop. So I just took the default settings for what you have here. So go to the Visual Studio website, download it, run the, run the installation package. This window will pop up and by default, C++ is not uh, selected. So just select it, desktop development with C++, install the package and you're good to go. You need to upgrade Flutter. I've already upgraded, so my upgrade was very quick here. You need to enable a Flutter desktop. So it's enable Windows desktop. If you're running Mac or Linux, you just change it from Windows to Mac or Linux. You have to be running on Windows to enable Windows. You can't be on a Mac and enable a Windows desktop. So you get a positive confirmation the values is now true. If I do Flutter devices, I now can see that I have a Windows device. So if I do Flutter run, I only have one device here, so I don't need to do hyphen D Windows like, like this, but it will run anyway. You can just do Flutter run because I only have one device here, but just to be, in case you have more than one device connected, you do Flutter Run. 
it's going to build it. I have a six core uh, i7 modest computer with uh, 32 gigs of RAM. It does take uh, you know, maybe 20 seconds, uh, possibly longer to do the build. But so this is in debug mode, right? It's not the it's not the actual Windows executable build. This is for when you're doing a software development and you can make changes to the code. So if you've done any Flutter development at all, uh, you're probably familiar with this process of hot reload, making a change to the code, and it'll operate as you would a normal Flutter application. Just to show you the development workflow in case you're deciding whether to go for it or not, it's it's the same. So in this application, this screen here is, is for my buddy to do some testing and teaching. Uh, it's a Jesse screen. There's only one button here, info. So I'm going to add another button to the screen. Uh, that's the info button right here. And I already have some pre-built buttons. So I'm going to add a state button to his screen. I need to import the... Uh, the button first. Once I've imported the button, I, I can now add it to my window here. Code completion. I've saved it and I started it from the command line. So I'll do hot reload. The state button is now here and it's functional. Again, the commands are coming from this camera over Wi-Fi. Uh, it was that quick to do a hot reload. If I had it embedded in here, probably when I saved it, it would have hot reloaded. But you don't have to rebuild the application. Uh, it's running on Dart right now with the Dart VM. So the development process is very fast, right? You just do the change and you can see the change immediately. In alpha right now so you probably don't want to go to production uh, with it at this stage but it's pretty good for testing um, the command is flutter build windows and it's, it's going to build it access it from the command line but I'm going to double click it so let's just go from here so this is the main flutter directory it's in build it's probably pretty easy to figure out because you just built it. So go to build, it's Windows. Again, it's pretty easy. So this is a little tricky. Uh, which one do you go into? It's actually in runner. So from your project directory, build Windows runner. Go into runner, it's a release. Here's the app and it launched here. I pre-configured this release directory uh, with three libraries. If you use this method of distributing the folder as a zipped file and the person you send it to does not have Visual Studio installed, uh, these it may not run. So you should grab a ms vpcp140.dll. You can grab it from your Visual Studio installation. You will need to have Visual Studio installed, obviously, in order to build this uh, for Flutter. Your Visual Studio already installed, so let's go find it. It's in Program Files x86. You drop down to Microsoft Visual Studio. So from here, you can then look for this specific library that you're going to need to drop into the folder here. This is not installed by Flutter, uh, this library. So it's msvcp140.dil. Okay, then it comes up. You just drag it over into the folder like that. I already have it in. Next one, VC Runtime 140 DSL. So I'm just using the search feature of Windows here to find a library. I've already searched for it. It's here. You can just drag it, put it in there. Do the same thing for the next library. VC runtime 140 underscore one dot DSL. You find it, click it here, drag it in. So you're going to have all your, you have your executable right here, plus the three libraries that you're going to need to, uh, when you send it out to your, your friends or your coworkers or someone that's doing the testing for you. 
they don't they won't need to have Visual Studio installed. They, they'll just have to unzip the file, click this thing, and they can test your app, give you some feedback. You're good to go. I think we'll work on Mac desktop as well as Linux desktop. Mac's a bit more involved in getting the security certifications to uh, distribute the app to other people. Uh, Linux is, is quite easy. Uh, we have a fair bit of experience building these type of mobile apps with Flutter. And we were using Android and iOS apps to build various types of testing apps uh, to showcase how the camera functioned for other developers. Uh, motion JPEG, um, thumbnails, extracting it from the, from the bytes and, and showing the images on the camera. Us also as testers. But when we started to use the desktop versions of these apps, uh, performance is great. It's not running an emulator. You don't have to use like a iPad emulator or something on your desktop. There's a lot of real estate here. Uh, the performance on the graphics seems to be quite good, uh, at least in our testing so far. And it's just been um, kind of a lot of fun. So I encourage you to give it a try. It's not quite ready to uh, distribute it uh, to your user base because the Windows version of the desktop is actually in alpha right now, but it's pretty solid. Uh, it doesn't crash. To me, it, it seems uh, quite good. And especially if you're showcasing some prototypes for your coworkers or, or your customers or your business partners that they want to build something um, and you're showing them a technique of how to build it, this is great.